It is part two of section 4.5, Lejandro polynomials, Gauss and Gauss Lobato integration. Here we begin with a definition of orthogonal polynomials. P0, P1, P2, P3, and so on is a collection of polynomials with a PK having degree K. The set of polynomials is called orthogonal polynomials when it satisfies uh, this equation. PK is orthogonal to Q. Q is an arbitrary choice from K-1 uh, polynomial space. So if you choose two different members from this collection, then they are orthogonal. The product has integral zero. Such orthogonal polynomials can be formulated by a certain three-term recurrence relation. The Lejandre polynomials are constructed uh, by using the following three-term recurrence relation, known as bonus recurrence formula. Uh, start with uh, P0 is 1, P1 is X. We can see a few first mm, polynomials. P0 is 1, P1 is X, and P2, from P2, it is made by using this formula. Uh, P2, P3, and P5. Okay, here uh, uh, is a figure. P0, there is 1, P1, and P2, and P3, and P4 is uh, purple, and P5 uh, is that one. Okay. These are the plots of the Lejandre polynomials. I got this one from Wikipedia. Here we have a theorem. Lejandre polynomials satisfy uh, these properties. Okay, the PK in modulus is bounded by one. As you can see over there, always between minus one to one. And PK uh, at one, the value is always one for every K, but at minus 1, pk has minus 1 to the k. So here, at 1, the value is 1, height is 1. But at minus 1, here, the p0 stuff from here, p1 stuff from here, p2 stuff from here, p3 stuff from here, and so on. Now, uh, pj, pk product, uh, has integral zero, which means that pj, pk, when mm, they are different, uh, uh, they are orthogonal. And pk squared has integral value, 1 over k plus half. Now we are ready to consider Gauss integration. Uh, suppose that x1 to xn, the no nodal points, are chosen from the roots of the nth Lejandre polynomial, and w1 to wn, the weights are obtained by uh, from the m minus first degree, uh, the cardinal functions. Uh, then the quadrature formula is exact for functions in uh, 2m minus first degree polynomials. Here we have uh, n parameters and another n, so total 2n uh, parameters. And by using undetermined coefficients technique, we can decide. And also we can use the trial uh, functions uh, from 1x and x squared and up to x to the 2n minus 1 to decide these 2n parameters. Then, then we can decide the points and weights 
the point set rates are exactly the same as here um, in the theorem. So that the points, if we got them, then that will be the roots of the nth uh, Legendre polynomial. And rates will be the, also the same. OK. So that's the theorem and uh, Gauss integration. So that here, uh, once the knots are determined and from the nth Legendre polynomial, then uh, we can use uh, the method of undetermined quotients to find the rates. Uh, that is exactly this one by using the trial functions. Okay, here we have implementation in Maple. Now that is rate system. Uh, here the output is this one and a, B, that function is defined here. And we try to get here Legendre polynomial from orthopoly. If you choose option P, then that is Legendre polynomial. Okay, it is sorted uh, so that yes, from highest order term uh, is uh, displayed. Okay. Now, after opening early, and here now we solve the Legendre polynomial, and that is uh, saved into NAT, and here, okay, now A and B are the early is open, and then uh, pass this one, then AB will be. It now here the evaluated and we get rates uh, by solving this linear system. So here we are using the technique uh, uh, in this node, okay, by using the method of undetermined quotients. Okay. Now we uh, try to print out the knots and rate. When case one, yeah, we have, okay, the interval is minus one to one. So one point must be symmetric so that it must be zero and rate must be, total rate must be two so that at zero, the weight must be two. And two points, then this is nodal points and this rates earlier in part one we try to get this one and here the exact value for uh, this portion is here now minus 1 over square root of 3 and this one is the same as 1 over square root of 3. We did in earlier in part 1. Now case 3, we have 3 points and 3 rates. Uh, as you can see here, they are symmetric. And also case four again symmetric and also uh, rates. And case five and five points and five rates. Okay. Now the Gaussian quadrature, Gaussian integration is defined on minus one to one. But we can use it for arbitrary intervals. Yeah, integral a to b f of, uh, f of x dx can be transformed into an interval over minus 1 to 1 by using the change of variable. From minus 1 to 1 to a, b, now this is a t variable and x variable here. Uh, then here the transform can be defined in this way. It's a scanning factor, b minus a, there's a length of the interval, the length of one table is 2, so that b minus a over 2 t, and once t is 0, the center point must go to the center point, which is a plus b over 2. So that is the transformation. Now, here, along with that transformation, an integral a to b dx can be changed into uh, this way 
minus 1 to 1. Now, uh, f of t, t, t of t, that portion here, and then here dx, dx, here a dx must be the same as this constant dt. That's exactly this one. So by using these change of variables, the integral is transformed, and now the new integrand is this whole portion. Um, now by using the known weights and nodal points, we can get uh, the quadrature. Okay. Okay. See uh, this example. Find the Gaussian quadrature for zero to pi sine x dx with n is two three four. So here we have transformation minus one to one to zero to pi. That is given in this way. So that using the change of variables, the integral is transformed into this one. Okay. Here, uh, now implementation a and b, and fx is a sine x, n max. Yeah, n is moving 2 to 4, so maximum value is 4. And now that is a transformation. And here we, for the purpose of analysis, we try to get the true value, which is 2. Uh, that value is 2. Now, we define that g of t in this way. That is exactly that one. Okay. And here, we try to get uh, a Gauss integration, Gauss uh, quadrature by using now the weight and nodal point evaluated from function g and add them to get the Gauss quadrature. For k is uh, from 2 to uh, 4. And after saving the value, we now print out here. n is 2, 3, 4. This is Gauss integral. And that is corresponding error. Uh, look at the error when n is 4. It's really a very good uh, approximation. Quite accurate uh, quadrature rule. Okay. Now, uh, here, one, uh, we may say, is a drawback. One drawback for Gauss integration is that here from minus 1 to 1, the point has chosen optimally, but the edge point, minus 1 and 1, is not included to the nodal points. Here, for Gauss formula, and minus 1 to 1, the x1 is stopped from here, and xn is around here. So that the edge points are not included. However, for some applications, um, edge points are really preferred to be involved with them. And this technique can be used part by part. And that means that now we are using the technique for one sub-interval and another sub-interval will continue uh, in the next. Then once edge value is not used, to, then around edge value, the representing uh, the polynomial or original function uh, has no guarantee to be continuous. People prefer uh, continuous functions so that here edge um, point must be included in some formula. That is uh, the gauss lobat integration. It is a variant of perturbation from Gauss integration. But we start with uh, here points and earlier we decide the point x0 and xn from minus 1 and 1. So the two edge points are uh, already included and try to find here interior points and okay so unknown is this one and that one 
we have to decide here n minus 1 naught and so they including these two total n plus 1 naught and n plus 1 um, weights so that there are two n parameters we have to decide that for this one now for points and here for the problem we may try to use here the method of undetermined equations now rather than this cumbersome computation we can get the points from the roots of first the derivative of the nth Liu-Zhang polynomial and once points are decided then again uh, here we are using the technique to get wi from the nth order Lagrange cardinal functions. So once we choose this way, then the quadrature formula must be exact for functions in uh, 2n minus first degree uh, polynomial space. So that is the Gauss-Lobato integration. Uh, this uh, integration mm, can be compared with uh, Gauss integration. Here we recall the Gauss integration and x1 to xn are roots of the nth Lejeune polynomial and w1 to wn are obtained from here the Lagrange cardinal functions of the degree n minus 1. Okay, over there, there's degree n. And also for this one, there are two n parameters. And we decide that uh, then by using this technique. Then here, the Gauss uh, integration quadrature must be exact for the functions from and p 2n minus 1, uh, that is the same. So that gauss lobat integration, uh, eventually gauss lobat integration has m plus 1 points. And for Gauss integration, we use n points, n interval points. But now for that one, uh, there are m plus 1 points, but two points are already decided so that degree of freedom is the same and accuracy is now here the same in some sense. Okay. Of course over there W0 uh, to WN these weights can be found by using the method of undetermined coefficients and, and that means that by solving this linear system with uh, trial functions. The Gauss-Lobato integration is a closed formula. The closed the word came from uh, the fact that the edge points are involved. So it is called a closed formula. Uh, closed interval is uh, treated so it is a closed formula. Uh, the Gauss-Lobato integration is more popular in real-world real world applications than open formulas such as the Gauss integration. Okay. Here, uh, finally, uh, we have a self-study problem. Uh, try to find the Gauss-Lobato quadrature for the same problem we treated earlier along with uh, uh, Gauss integration. By using uh, Gauss-Lobato quadrature, you can see quite similar accuracy. Okay, try to do it uh, yourself. Okay, this is the end of the section. Thank you.